Good afternoon and uh, greetings from Amsterdam. I'm happy to see that you all joined us from all over the world for this webinar today on the bachelor's program in communication science at the University of Amsterdam. Um, today uh, we will of course discuss uh, what is the subject of communication science, what it does it entail, what the program is structured like and as well uh, we'll, we'll try to give you a glimpse of what it is like to be a student here in our program. My name is Sarah de Jong. I'm study advisor here in the bachelor's program in communication science. Standing next to me is my colleague, Sanne Kruikemeyer. She is assistant professor in our department. And later in this, ses in this session, uh, Lucas will join us uh, as one of our students in our program to share his experiences as well. Let me tell you how this webinar works. Of course, you listen to this presentation, but as well, you can participate in our live chat function. So if you have any questions, you can ask them. And my colleagues behind the scenes, they will try to answer your questions as thorough and soon as possible. Uh, the session, chat session will be open also a little bit afterwards uh, to the session. So hopefully you'll be able to have your, all your questions answered. Uh, if we're not able to ask, answer all questions, we'll make sure that we send you an email with the answers after this session has ended, as well as a brief summary of uh, the most important matters that you need to know uh, from this session. Um, of course, we'll also direct you to our website. There you find a lot of information that we discussed today as well. Um, this is our website. I'll go through, with, with, I'll go through it uh, with you a little bit later as well. Uh, in the left bar, you find information on the program, on the curriculum, as well on the career prospects and the uh, practical matters such as the application procedure you find there as well. And in the top menu, uh, you find information on when our open days are scheduled, uh, also uh, on the practical matters such as uh, housing, visa, insurance, all important matters for you as an international student wishing to, to study here. So what is on our program for today? First. We will, we will we'll go into what is com communication science. My colleague Sanna will try to answer that question for you. And then we'll continue by explaining how our bachelor's program is structured. So what courses will you take? How does the program actually look like? Uh, after that, I'll go into uh, the more of the practical matters as well, such as application and housing. I'll also invite one of our students to share his experiences uh, in our program. And before closing, I will tell you all about prospects after graduation. So let's first move to the very important question, what is communication science? And I'll give the floor uh, to Sanna, my colleague, to answer that question for you. Thank you, Sarah. So my name is Sanna Kruikemeyer. I work here as an assistant professor of political communication, uh, and I work, work also as a lecturer, and I teach in the bachelor uh, communication, but also in the master. And today I will discuss and explain to you a little bit about what is really communication science. So to give you an insight of what you're going to study, which are the topics that will be discussed, and how are you, uh, how your program basically looks looks like. So to start, I want to give you a brief overview of what communications communication science really is. And to explain that, it's really important to understand that uh, communication is something which is all around us. So it's really important in our daily lives. Um, by the way we communicate to others, how we get our information about the world, the world is often via the media or through mediated communication via other contexts. So it's also a social science, which means that we answer questions based which are there in society and are answered using these process of ha processes of how we get information via the media or via others. So to explain to you a little bit more in detail what communication science is, uh, I want to show you this model, which is really famous and we also use it to explain to our bachelor stu students what communication science is. So it's, it's basically five things. So it is who communicates, so who is the communicator, says what, so what is the message, so what is the content, how does the message, message look like, uh, in which channel, so via which medium, it can be, for instance, social media, traditional media like television or newspapers, uh, to whom, so for instance to you, uh, but also with what effects. And what's really interesting also about communication science is that you are also part, 
part of participants in this uh, communication process. For instance, I am uh, a consumer, but I'm also a, a voter, for instance. I am a stakeholder, I can work in an organization, but I can also be a gamer, for instance. So there are different uh, aspects of our lives are also there uh, which we are studying. So basically, communication and science is uh, divided into four different topics, and I will explain each of these topics um, uh, to you. So the first one is easy for me because I'm part of this uh, group, uh, which is political communication and journalism. And in this uh, topic or this, uh, uh, um, yeah, basically, I would say topic, uh, we focus on the relationship between politicians, the media, and citizens, for instance, public opinion. Um, a lot of our news we get uh, via the media, for instance, via television, uh, newspapers, but also social media, and this is becoming increasingly important. Um, and this communi communication is filtered by journalists, and this is something you study in this um, in this uh, topic, where you look at um, how communica communication is filtered by media, by gatekeepers, and how does it, does that affect citizens. And it's really important, for instance, uh, during uh, the last US election, for instance, you see that Trump uh, uh, got this victory while the media didn't um, uh, expect that. And this is something we study also, uh, we look at opinion polls, so how does this information about political or societal relevant issues, um, uh, how does it affect citizens? Corporate communication is another important field within communication science. And corporate communication focused on uh, big companies, um, uh, but also smaller companies, and how they communicate externally, but also internally. So it focuses on two aspects of uh, communication science. It focuses, for instance, on uh, how does a, a, a big organization communicate uh, something uh, when something goes wrong, like, for instance, crisis communication. You remember with the iPhone that it bended, for instance. Uh, that might also be a, a way how, how can we uh, make the, the, the communication or the, the topic which is discussed in the media and by citizens more positive, for instance. Uh, another way um, uh, or other thing we uh, often discuss within corporate communication is, for instance, how do uh, managers talk to employees and how uh, can they be more satisfied and how should you as an as a manager for instance communicate certain aspects of an organization to um, uh, your employees so it's also about a lot of different stakeholders then we have persuasive communication. Persuasive communication is focused on how can messages be persuasive? And it's also focused on two different domains. So the first one is health communication. So it can be how can you persuade people, for instance, not to smoke or not to drink that much, it's about binge, binge drinking. How can you, for instance, start a, a campaign on social media which uh, circumvent that people are uh, going to, to you know, overly uh, consume uh, alcohol, for instance. And it can also focus on children. That's also in a, a specific, uh, domain. And also with persuasive communication, uh, an important uh, one is marketing communication. So how can you design advertising, for instance, not to uh, prevent people from so doing something, but to uh, motivate people, for instance, to buy uh, products? Uh, and how can you make advertising so appealing that it can affect a lot of citizens? And for whom is it, for instance, also effective? And the last one is entertainment communication. Um, and this uh, kind of communication is really focused on the more the entertainment, what the word already says that, of course, but it's more focused on the, the entertainment purposes of media. For instance, gaming, it can focus on uh, addictions, for instance. Uh, why com do uh, people come addicted to games and what are the implications of that? Are people more violent, for instance? But also questions which relates to uh, uh, selfies, for instance. So if a lot of these uh, Instagram pictures of girls who are like being fit, how does that affect uh, 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 children or uh, young adolescents? Um, and this is something uh, this uh, specific um, uh, uh, domain focuses on. So we have these four domains or four topics, but it's something you don't have to choose now. So when you start doing your bachelor's, you get a lot of these courses which are more general. And then during the course of three years, you will get specific, uh, dom uh, in these specific uh, uh, courses, you will get information about these specific domains. So one might focus on political communication, the other ones might focus more on entertainment communication. So you get to know all these different topics. And then during your master, for instance, you can choose one topic. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you will only focus on uh, uh, this specific domain, but you can also um, tailor your uh, masters a little bit in the way that you can also be a little bit diverse. So then you have also a more specification, but it can still also be broad. 
So why study communication science at the University of Amsterdam? With this information, I try to uh, to tell you a little bit more about what it is about communication science and what it, what communication science is and what it entails. Uh, so you have to make that decision. On the other hand, we are also I am also very proud to work here. So I wanted to highlight a few aspects which I think are really uh, nice to tell you something about why it is nice or good or. And, uh, important to study here. For instance, why communication science at the University of Amsterdam? Uh, it's one of the top communication science departments of the world, uh, especially uh, in Europe. It's, I think, the number one um, uh, topic, which also sh is shown by rankings. Um, and also in the world, it's, uh, well, it's a well-known uh, uh, department. It has also close links with the research institute. So I'm, for instance, a lecturer, but I'm also a researcher. Um, so it has close links to that. So for instance, you can also collaborate with uh, researchers on their topic, which is also nice because you get to know uh, the, the research or the, the, research behind the, or the, the research behind the lecturers, uh, which can be nice to also uh, discuss, for instance, uh, um, uh, topics which are dealt with in communication science more in depth. You can also work with them uh, and their uh, are a lot of international uh, staff. So we have a lot of research who are coming from, um, uh, uh, for instance, Germany or the United States or England. And it's nice to uh, also get to know them and also uh, get more information about the different perspectives also around the world. Um, I will give the word to Sarah uh, right. because she will explain a little bit more about also the different topics which are discussed. Thank you, Sarah. Sana. Um, well, uh, something to add to that, uh, one of the uh, special features of our program, I believe, is that we offer a broad range of subjects. So, our son already explained, you'll study communication science and we distinguish four main topics in communication science and you'll, uh, you'll be offered a wide range of learning opportunities in each of this, these four topics. So, all of these are part of our bachelor's program. And you, you will learn about all of these four. And also, if you're more interested in one or two out of these four topics, you can also um, choose more courses to increase your knowledge uh, about that specific topic. So you are able, you're able to suit the program um, to, to personalize it a bit further according to your wishes and interest. And there are also other ways to personalize your program. Uh, for instance, you have 30 credits of electives that you can fill up with courses according to your own uh, preferences. And uh, you, can do, you will, do, will do an internship. You choose, of course, yourselves where you would like to do that internship. Uh, and there are also other options uh, in w by which you can personalize uh, your own program. And I will go in more, in more detail um, later on. And well, lastly, and very importantly, is that Amsterdam is a great city to live in. Um, I can say from my own experience, I believe uh, some of my colleagues can as well. And uh, well, for instance, uh, Amsterdam was ranked 11 out of 200 cities worldwide in Mercer's quality of, uh, of, uh, of living survey. So that means, well, it's a great city to live in, and uh, a lot of people believe so. And uh, in Amsterdam, there are also a lot of organizations uh, situated that, well, that focus themselves on media and communication, and as well a, a, a big presence of uh, big organizations that have a media presence as well. So you can imagine that Amsterdam is an interesting place to study communication science in. All right. Well, Sanna has left me. Thank you, Sanna, for your uh, uh, for your addition to uh, the session today. And she uh, switched places with Lucas, one of our students in our program. Welcome, Lucas. Hello, Can you just introduce yourself briefly and also tell us why you chose to study communication science? Of course. Um, hello, my name is Lucas. Um, I'm 20 years old and I just started this program. So I'm at the very beginning in my first semester right now. Um, yeah, and I come from Austria and I decided for communication science because I come from a rather practical background. So I did graphic design in my high school education and yeah, wanted to get more of the theoretical point of view. Okay, thank you very much. And of course, uh, later I will ask you much more about your experiences here in our program. Um, but I'm also curious whether there are maybe already some questions from you, the viewers, that we can discuss uh, so far. Just looking at my colleagues, whether they have a question that we can answer right away. Thank you very much. Uh, a question coming from uh, one of you is how many people started with the program last year? 
Well, we started uh, our program last September uh, with approximately 230 students, and Lucas is one of them. So a big group of students that is participating in our uh, yeah, in the bachelor's program in communication science at the moment. Okay. Um, okay, well, let's uh, continue the program for today. First of all, I will uh, tell you more about how our bachelor's program is structured, so the courses you'll be taking and in what order and so. Uh, after that, I'll also ask uh, Lucas' experiences about uh, what, what, what he experienced so far in our program. And uh, after that, I will go into more detail on the, the practical matters, such as application, housing, and also uh, I'll tell you a bit more about the career pros prospects after graduating in our program. So let's continue with the bachelor's program. Here you can see the full program uh, in one slide. So our program is three years. This is uh, the first year, the second year, and the third year. And also each year is divided into semesters. So two semesters for each year. And then again, each semester is divided in different blocks, uh, usually of eight weeks, sometimes uh, longer blocks of 16 weeks, and also sometimes of just four weeks. So usually you take two courses at the same time, sometimes just one when it's a shorter block. Uh, our program is, uh, it, it is in total 180 credits when we work with ECTS credits, so European credits, you might be familiar with that. Um, so you, be, you obtain 60 ECTS credits each year. Okay, uh, we do have some requirements within our program. For instance, when you um, wish to continue to the second year of the program, we have as a requirement that you need to have obtained 48 credits out of 60 of the first year. So that's one requirement within our program to be able to continue with the rest of the program. Then we have as well some other requirements within the program. For instance, if you want to continue with an advanced level of statistics, you need to have obtained uh, the, the, the introduction course on statistics. And also we have, for instance, a graduation project uh, built in the program in which you write a thesis. And for that, you need to have obtained 90 credits, the first half of the program, uh, in order to, uh, to start with that uh, component in our program. You see that uh, we ha I have uh, different colors for different courses in our program. You can see on the slide. Um, you can see courses in yellow slash orange. And these courses are mostly focused on the theories in communication science. So they are about communication science. You, and of course, you'll first start with an introduction to the communication science. And then you will continue with courses that uh, focus on the different topics in communication science. So as well the topics that my colleague just addressed. So corporate communication, you will have a course in entertainment communication, persuasive communication and political communication and journalism. So all of these topics will be addressed uh, in the bachelor's program. Then you have as well uh, the purple courses or blue blue purple <laughs> and these courses uh, address uh, the, the methods and statistics in our program and you can see that makes up quite a big part of the program so you will have, have uh, yeah, a big focus on learning how to do research in communication science so you learn to work with uh, statistics uh, you learn how to do a survey an experiment and content ana analysis uh, as well you learn to do qualitative research so that takes up a big part of the program as well um, and next to uh, the first year, you see a vertical uh, well, square um, with academic skills tutoring. That's also part of the first year. So when you start studying in our program, you'll be assigned a, a mentor and a mentor group, a group of about 25 students. And together with uh, these students and your mentor, you will practice academic and study skills. And also you'll receive a lot of information about the continua continuation of the program, the choices that you need to make well, to personalize your program, and also uh, job opportunities uh, will be discussed during uh, those classes. Uh, so that's, uh, that will take up the full year and you will meet up every two, three weeks, depends on, on the schedule. Uh, well, Lucas, you're in the first semester of our program, 
so busy with the course as well, right in the middle of the two, first two courses, Introduction to Communication Science and Methods of Communication Science and Statistics. How have you experienced those two courses so far? Um, yeah, as you as you already pointed out, the uh, the rather yellow um, and yeah yellow courses are, mm -hmm. are rather focused on on communication theories, whereas the purple courses are focused on on research methods. Mm -hmm. um, so, in introduction to communication science, we are being taught about fundamental theories that underlie human communications, um, and then in the purple courses or in methods and statistics, we're right now doing an introductory course uh, in statistics, but also in uh, yeah research methods, so different approaches, qualitative research, quantitative research, what the specific approaches entail, and we also do projects that then apply these approaches. Okay, and how do you experience the statistics part of the... Wonderful. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, uh, to be honest, a bit afraid of statistics in the first place. But uh, to be honest, it is definitely manageable with, with a uh, high school degree. Um, and the mathematics part is not that big. We also work a lot with SPSS, which is an, a statistical software for social sciences. Um, and that makes things a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And it's actually really important and then also fun to, to see and to statistically analyze your, your research results. Okay. So very useful. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, well, as you see in this slide, there are also some courses marked gray. Uh, I didn't mention the, why is that yet. Uh, but with these courses, you can uh, personalize your program. As I mentioned before, you do have the opportunity to make some choices within the program. The first half of the program, so the first three semesters, the first 90 credits, they are fixed. You take the same students as every student that's taken in our course, in our program. In, in the, also in that order, but that afterwards, after that, the second half of the program, you can personalize it. So uh, you can uh, follow your own interest. And I will just show you um, some examples of how you can personalize your program. Well, first of all, you have one semester, 30 credits that you can fill up with elective courses. So that can be courses outside the field of communication science. So here you see there is one full semester reserved for elective courses. Um, for instance, maybe, well, besides communication science, you're also interested in uh, marketing or in history, or you want to learn a language. You do have the opportunity to uh, take those courses and uh, incorporate that in your program, well, in the elective space of the program. Also, uh, you need to do an internship as a mandatory part of the program. That's quite a special feature of our bachelor's program as well, because it's not a common uh, component of bachelor's programs, uh, usually in the Netherlands. Uh, for us, it's a mandatory part, so every student needs to do, that, needs to do it, so needs to gain that practical experience uh, in the field. Uh, the internship needs to be at least 12 weeks or 16 work working days. It can be as well a bit longer if, you're, uh, if you prefer so. Uh, and of course, in the internship, you're, uh, you learn to um, apply all the knowledge and skills that you have obtained so far in the practice, in the field. So quite an important component of our program. Uh, as well, you have uh, the graduation project, was well, scheduled for the end of the program. Uh, for the graduation project, you can choose in which topic you want to do that. So they can be one of the four we mentioned before. So for instance, you're interested in persuasive communication, then you can choose to do your graduation project in that field, and uh, you'll end graduation project with your bachelor's thesis on a topic within, for example, the persuasive communication. Also, uh, you have an option to choose uh, topics within communication science. As you can see here, you need to choose two uh, topics as part of the program and these topics are actually elective courses within communication science so think of uh, a course with the title international communication or customer media or uh, national identity and the news these could be titles of those topics that you could choose from uh, and maybe you're interested to spend a semester abroad as part of your program that's possible as well uh, the most common uh, way to do that is by going on an exchange. So that means that you will fill up your elective space at a university abroad. And the University of Amsterdam has a lot of partners worldwide where you could do that. Uh, so within Europe, outside Europe, a lot of options to choose from. 
Um, so that might be an, an, uh, an, a useful addition to your program as well and very helpful, well, uh, where you could learn a lot from, I believe. Besides going on exchange, you can also choose to do your internship abroad. There are also students uh, going abroad for their internship. Okay, well, these are the options for personalizing your program. Well, Lucas, he just started our program, but do you already have some ideas on how you would like to personalize your program at a later stage? Well, as for now, I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, trying to head into political communication and journalism, mm -hmm. but that's quite broad for now. So I, I can't really say for sure that this is what I want to do. As we already mentioned, I'm in my first semester now and in the first two courses. Um, but yeah, heading into that field, I would like to be responsible for, for example, a non-governmental organization mm -hmm. and uh, do their communications part as an internship, for example. But this is a very broad way of thinking now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll see how this all evolves. Okay. Oh, that sounds interesting. And I hope you, you, uh, you'll get there <laughs> next year or the year after that. Um, all right. Uh, well, before moving on, maybe there are also there's still some questions to be answered. Just take a look at my colleagues, whether there are. Yes, I see. Okay. Uh, well, I do get uh, one question about the size of the classes. Uh, so how many people are in one class? Uh, well, Lucas, maybe you can answer that. Um, so generally, there's a distinction between between lectures and classes. So we mm -hmm. have lectures where uh, all of the participants, so around 200, or depending on how many of them show up, um, are in the lecture hall. But then there's also um, seminars or tutorials that are made up of only 20 people. Um, and one tutor, so it's a really personal environment and you also get to do a lot of group projects and um, there it is good to have yeah, a, a close relationship to, to the people you're actually studying with. So that's quite personal. Yeah, yeah. so you'll either have uh, yeah, uh, lectures together with a lot of students, could be more than 200, but also the tutorials where you have a setting of well, max 25 students in one classroom. Yeah. Um, also, uh, another question is about well, how many nationalities you have, we have in our current program. So, well, of course, we have Austrian, uh, but <laughs> okay, what other nationalities do you have I in your class, I forgot the exact instance? number, unfortunately, because in the first lecture we had a slide, um, a diagram of all the different nationalities. I think it's about, no, actually, I don't know anymore. I know that there is about one quarter of Dutch students, and then mm -hmm. there is about one quarter of German students, and yeah. the rest is from from all around the world so yeah it's really quite mixed which is also interesting to kind of yeah get to know all the cultural distinctions when you work together in group or projects i can imagine that is quite interesting to hear from other uh, people's experience from different countries and cultures um yeah that's correct we we do have a lot of nationalities in our program yeah the biggest and um, group of nationalities are indeed Dutch and German, but they together I don't think they make up yet half of the program. So besides that, we have a lot of other nationalities in our program as well. So a great mix of nationalities, which makes it uh, quite fascinating, I think. Um, and I got another question about the exchange. So I see you're already interested in studying abroad. Well, maybe studying abroad here to do the program, but then again to do an exchange semester uh, still in a different country. And the question is about what are the most popular exchange destinations and some examples of that. Um, well, that differs, but I can say that well, the popular, most popular destination, I think, well, within Europe, uh, are usually the popular destinations situated in Scandinavia, or also Spain or uh, United Kingdom. Uh, but we do have more options than that to choose from. And outside of Europe, I think United States, Australia, uh, South Africa, uh, they, those are quite popular destinations, and also more and more uh, the Asian destinations. But you can take a look at our website. We have studyabroad.uva.nl. My colleagues can write it down as well in the chat session. And there you find a world map with all possible destinations that you can choose from as a UVA student to apply. All right. Well, I've just shown you an overview of our full bachelor's program, so the full three years. And now just imagine that you will apply, you are enthusiastic for the program, and next year, September, you'll start in our program. And this, this slide 
that you see here. Uh, this could be your schedule for the first week. This, uh, this, this is what it could look like. Um, just you, as you can see, you have courses spread out through the, throughout the week, classes uh, throughout the week. So you can, can have classes from Monday to Friday. Uh, maybe you'll start the week on Monday with a lecture, so with, uh, with all students together in a big lecture hall. Uh, for the course Introduction to Communication Science. Then maybe on Tuesday you'll have a lecture for Methods and Communication Science and Statistics at 11. And then in, uh, followed by a tutorial, so a small group session. Um, and the next day as well, maybe a lecture at 9, but then at 5 o'clock in the afternoon an Academic Skills Tutoring class. So it could be that there are gaps in your schedule as well. And uh, on Thursday, a lecture on uh, methods and communication science and statistics, followed by a tutorial. And then again, maybe on Friday, another tutorial for introduction to communication science. So about well, 12, 14, 16 hours uh, of classes per week. That's, the, that's common in our program. Uh, but that also means that sometimes you can have, uh, not all classes are followed after each other. So it could, be, it could happen that you have big gaps in between. Well, um, Lucas, maybe your schedule looks some of looks f this schedule looks familiar Somehow. to you. <laughs> uh, do you also have these gaps, and, and how do you deal with that? What do, what do you do with your time in between? We do. Um, first things first, we have lunch, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but as I mentioned before, we also participate in a lot of group projects, and then especially if there is a, a short break between a lecture and the tutorial, for example, there is always some time to work either on the group project mm -hmm. or to re. Yeah, to revisit uh, the study content that was being taught in the lecture because uh, it also coheres with the with the study content being provided in the tutorial, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so overall, we mostly spent the time either in the library or in some of the study rooms to do either group project or revise the classes. So can you usually find ways to use that time efficiently uh, yes. by doing the group work assignments? Exactly. All right. Um, well, and also as I mentioned, well, you have maybe fourteen. 16 contact hours, contact hours per week, um, but we do expect from our students that they dedicate 40 hours per week on their, their studies. So there's a lot of self-study involved as well. How do you structure your self-study? Um, it really depends on, on, on what there is to do because uh, sometimes there are group projects, there are individual projects, um, so you need to write a lot of papers, you need to really focus on, on, on writing those papers and make some time up for that. Um, and then next to that, uh, yeah, of course, I attend the lectures and the tutorials and then try to revise the literature. Um, yeah, but that actually works quite, quite well for me, especially because the campus offers, offers yeah, large facilities for working there in the library together with others. Yeah, so you always find a place to do your self-study there. As yes, well. if it's not the exam week. Yeah, then it can get <laughs> crowded, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's move on. Uh, well, I think uh, our viewers are, are curious to hear more about your experience as an international student in our program. So um, could you maybe also tell us a bit about well, what it is like to be a student here in Amsterdam, international student moving, moving from another country uh, to here? How did you experience that? Could you tell us uh, something about that? It is purely amazing, of course. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's a nice experience. Mm -hmm. One is welcomed easily and all the Dutch people fortunately speak English perfectly well as you can hear. <laughs> um, so it's really not a problem to connect with all the people. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is that there are also lots of Dutch people in our program so we are not only in this international bubble and only get to know international people um, but also the Dutch ones. Okay. So this is a nice combination. Okay and was it hard to acclimatize uh, to uh, the, well, in living in a, in a Dutch city, in a Dutch culture? what was hard or what was easy to get used to? No, most of it was quite easy. The climate is a bit hard, depending on where you come from, but I see there's people from Brazil, <laughs> <laughs> so be aware of that. So um, what is the weather like today, for instance? Today it's actually okay. <laughs> today it's okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm already afraid of the first winter in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. um, no, but other than that, it is, as mentioned before, quite easy to get to know people and to get to know the surroundings of, of the city. Okay. So that's all. 
Okay. That's uh, easy to remember. What do you do besides studying? What do you do when you're in your free time? If um, you have uh, the hours free. So far, I really like to enjoy the cultural side of Amsterdam. There's there's lots of museums, and you mm -hmm. can already uh, also get a museum card. So I really try to to get to see lots of what's going on there. And also right now, there's an international documentary film festival happening. Mm -hmm. So from a cultural perspective, Amsterdam is has huge opportunities, which is great. Offer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that's great. And uh, hopefully you do find time to enjoy that part of the, of Amsterdam as well. Yes. Um, all right, let's move on to the next subject. Uh, well, I can imagine lots of you are uh, far away from here and no idea yet of how our campus looks like, uh, how the university looks like, or what it could be, yeah, what it what your experience here could look like. Um, here you can see uh, pictures of our campus, Hutus Island campus. Uh, this is where our program in communication science is situated, so where you spend most of the time as a student in our program. Uh, our campus, uh, well, our program is part of the Faculty of Social and Behavioral Sciences, and all, all other programs in that faculty are also situated here at Rutes Island Campus. And also Economics and Business is situated there, and the Faculty of Law will move there soon as well. Uh, there are two other main campuses uh, of the university, which are either situated in the city center or at the east of the city center. Uh, humanities in the center and science uh, east of the center and our campus is situated well at the east side of the city center uh, here you can see some pictures of the uh, uh, of the buildings um, below you can see a picture of the building where you take most of uh, of your classes uh, you can see that the building is hanging over a kennel so you can imagine from there you have great views over the Amsterdam Canal, so a typical Amsterdam view, as I can say. Uh, also, there are some green spots around the campus also uh, where you can sit down, relax, re read a book, have your lunch, in summertime at least. <laughs> and uh, on the top pictures you can see uh, uh, the inside of our uh, uh, library learning center on the left top, uh, where you can uh, meet other students to work on a group assignment, also find a quiet place to study and you, where you can have a meal as well. And on the right you find uh, another uh, well, canteen uh, workplace yeah, where you can sit down to have your lunch or uh, to study as well. Uh, on the next picture you can see some more pictures of our uh, campus. Uh, above in the middle uh, you find a picture of, uh, of one of the lecture halls so the, the, where you have a lecture together with 200 maybe 300 students at the same time so big lecture halls um, for instance from our uh, colleague Sanna that you've just uh, listened to and as well uh, below you find a, a big uh, a picture of a big examination hall so also the exams uh, you take together with hundreds of students either on paper or also on the computer so you also get used to uh, uh, taking exams uh, on the computer uh, well besides well studying uh, our students also undertake a lot of activities with uh, outside of studying these are either also organized by our department for instance we have lectures in which students and staff can, uh, uh, can attend together but also uh, some social activities. Uh, um, for instance, uh, we organize each year, uh, 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 we uh, take part in a big running event in Amsterdam with a big, big group of students and staff in communication science, so we can also well, enjoy sports together. And uh, we run 10 miles from Amsterdam to another nearby city. And also, of course, the university has other sports and facilities as well that you can join as a student with a big discount. Uh, well, Lucas, maybe you can add something to uh, to my story. What is your experience studying at our campus? What are your favorite places and so? Um, first of all, I just saw the question popping up uh, regarding student campus location. Mm -hmm. uh, most commonly, Rutas Island is the the number one campus, so you're gonna have all of your classes there. Hopefully, sometimes it can also happen that classes need to be split up. And for example, I have one uh, class at the law campus in the city center which is also nice <laughs> because it's nice uh, old buildings um, but it can be a bit of a struggle to, to go there but most of the time you'll be you'll be all set with the Rutes Island campus 
And also what is good uh, is that there are several campuses across the city, as you mentioned before. Uh, so, you, for example, if you don't want to go all the way to Rutes Island campus and your uh, yeah, home is situated somewhere else, you can go to the closest campus and, of course, study there, mm -hmm. use their library facilities, use their uh, canteen and everything. Um, yeah, and apart from that, Rutes Island provides big enough facilities most of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but if there's the exam week, for example, the library can be a bit crowded, but mm -hmm. usually that's, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, well, maybe there are some questions still to be answered. Yes, there are. Great, thank you. Uh, well, I got a question uh, from one of you asking how students are uh, being guided throughout the program uh, when, for instance, they are encountering problems, personal circumstances, or, for instance, uh, language problems. Uh, well, of course, in the, in the first year, uh, you do have your mentor, as I mentioned before, so the, the, the tutor of the academic skills. Uh, tutoring class is your mentor for the year and the first point of contact when you do encounter such problems. So uh, of course uh, we'll try to help you as, as good as possible to, uh, to face these problems when you do have them. And also through the university uh, we do have lots of uh, service provided for students when they want uh, to practice in certain study skills. Uh, so we offer trainings or maybe you want to talk to a student psychologist if you are having trouble concentrating or maybe feeling uh, struggling with exam anxiety. So all of these problems, uh, there, yeah, you, find, you can find guidance on these, uh, on these matters. And of course we have uh, a study for advices. I am one of them for the program and uh, you can always reach out for me when you do encounter a, a, such a problem. Um, also, there are a lot of questions about application, I see, and I will go into more detail about uh, on that process uh, later on. So I'll get back to that. And another question is about the schedule. Well, are you able to choose your own schedule? Lucas, can you tell us about that? Um, as you also mentioned before, I guess, in the, in the first uh, one and a half years, it is quite structured. So there are uh, mandatory courses in, you need to uh, participate in. Um, but then afterwards you can first of all choose the electives or, or some other courses you want to participate in. Um, I also tried to do that in my first semester but it turns out to, to be a little bit too much. <laughs> um, so I didn't do that uh, right from the beginning. So it is better to, to first take all the mandatory classes in the first semester or semesters um, and then head into your specific field of study or into your mm. uh, field of interest. Um, so taking extra courses maybe after the first year. Exactly, you, uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay, and about your uh, uh, your weekly schedule, are you able to uh, choose your own time slots, for instance? Uh, not really, that gets assigned. So there is always a certain slot for lectures and then there is another slot for the tutorial. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, also gets uh, divided up between all of the groups. Mm -hmm. As we uh, already told you, there is the, the bigger groups of the lectures and then the smaller groups within the tutorials. Um, and they are really spread across uh, all different days, but okay. that's not uh, for us to choose. Yeah, well, I can add something to that, uh, something mm -hmm. that you have not experienced yet, I think, because oh. you just started the program. <laughs> that's true. For the first semester, you get tutorials assigned to you. So uh, th those are the classes that you participate in. Uh, but from the next uh, semesters onwards, you're able to enroll for courses yourself. So you can choose uh, in what time slot you want to uh, take your tutorial. Of course, if you're uh, quick to register for that, those courses, but you can, you can imagine a popular time slots might get fuller uh, faster than the, the less popular ones. So you're able to make your own uh, weekly schedule uh, uh, for the next semesters. But of course, the lectures are, uh, <laughs> are set and then you have to attend those on the time slot that is indicated. Yeah. Okay, well then I will move on uh, to the practical matters. Uh, so I'll discuss with you uh, the application procedure, also uh, uh, housing through the university, I'll uh, go into that. Uh, I can imagine most of you have international prior education. 
Um, so we have different application processes for students with Dutch prior education and international prior education. Uh, the steps that you need to take with, uh, as a student with international prior education are as follows. There are five steps that you need to take. You can find them here on the website. Um, first of all, of course, you check the entry requirements so to see whether you can meet uh, well, the requirements that we set for uh, students that want to be admitted to our program. Uh, first of all, your previous education will be evaluated. So your educa previous education needs to be at the same level, uh, equal, equal to our Dutch pre-university education. That is a VWO diploma, a VWO diploma, we call that. So uh, once you have submitted your application, we will, uh, our central admissions office will evaluate whether your previous education meets that standard that we set. Uh, also, well, as well, we have an English language proficiency requirement, so you need to have obtained a certain level of English proficiency, uh, of course, because our, uh, our program is totally taught in English, and we expect a certain level of English from you, and you need to prove that by means of an English language test score. Um, so that's par also part of the application, and the minimum requirements for that you can find on our website. Uh, there are also some uh, diplomas, degree certificates that do offer an exemption for that. If you did have English uh, in your final examination, uh, you can find a list of those on the website as well. So I'll refer you to the website for that. Um, well, and the next step, well, of course, you then you, you hopefully have an indication whether you meet uh, the entry requirements. Of course, you can always ask us if you do have uh, doubts about that or want to know more about that than what is indicated on our website. Uh, then the first step to take is to, to register in StudyLink. StudyLink is uh, our online portal in the Netherlands to enroll for higher education programs. So also for our bachelor's program, that's the first step to take. After you're registered in StudyLink, uh, you will be invited to submit your application. It's a, this is an online application form that you need to fill out. First of all, you need to fill out your personal details. We'll ask you about that. And also you have to upload uh, copies of your transcripts and degree, degree certificates. Uh, also a language test that you've, uh, that you've taken, the results of that we want to see. And uh, also you need to add a letter of motivation to your application. So that's uh, about one page uh, uh, explaining why you want to, take, uh, to, to study here in our program and, and at our university, what, are your what is your personal motivation to apply to our program. Uh, as well, we ask you to upload a CV and a letter of reference. So from someone that knows your academic qualities. Uh, so that is what the full application looks like. Once you have submitted that, we will uh, evaluate your uh, previous education and uh, the, the full package of your application. And uh, after that, you will also be invited to par participate in our online program FIT. Well, that might, might sound new to you. That's uh, a, a mandatory part of our application process. Uh, you will participate in one week of um, uh, of our uh, uh, program actually, so you you will get a taste of uh, what it is like to study in our program. You'll attend, you need to uh, see some online uh, lectures, you need to uh, do some assignments in the field of communication science that introduce you to the topic and also you end that week, it takes a couple of days to participate in the online program that you'll end up with a test and based on all that the assignments and the results of the test you will re receive from us an advice whether uh, the program is is a right fit for you and if you have the right motivation and study skills to make it uh, a success so after you have completed those steps uh, there is uh, we will ask you as well uh, after, after we made you an offer for entry in the program, we'll ask you as well to send us our all certified copies of transcripts and diplomas that you have obtained. And uh, once we finalize your registration, of course, you also uh, need to pay the tuition fee. And information on that you find on our web website as well. So that's how the complete procedure looks like. I'm just seeing whether there are some questions that uh, I could uh, 
could answer on that matter. Um, well, not at this minute, I believe. Oh, maybe one, yes, that I can answer on that matter. Okay, one question is, uh, when, when will we hear uh, from our admission? Uh, well, we try to give you an answer within six to eight weeks. Um, it could take maybe a little bit longer for the evaluation of your uh, previous education, but hopefully sometimes as well a little bit sooner, depending on uh, the amount of applications that are coming in at the time. Uh, but we try to, uh, to give you uh, uh, the outcome within six to eight weeks. Okay, one other question about that matter. Okay, there are also some questions about what should you cover in the uh, statement of your, your motivation. Uh, well, as I mentioned, you, you, just, you need to write about uh, what is your personal motivation on the program. So why do you choose this, choose this, this topic, communication science? So what is your motivation behind that? And as well, uh, we ask you to answer as well the question, why do you want to study here at the University of Amsterdam? So, uh, well, personal as well as an academic motivation, I think uh, you can add to that. And maybe Lucas can share his experiences on that. I'm going to share a PDF file afterward. <laughs> his motivation. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, exactly. I just really personally reflected on, on, on why I wanted to study communication science and on why I wanted to study it at the UFA. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's basically really about your personal interest and uh, why it relates to the UFAS program they offer. Yeah. For me, it was because of the program structure was on one hand quite broad. So as you heard before, it, it covers a lot of uh, different fields related to communication in the broadest sense, but you can also specify the fields of your study and uh, be super specific once you've found out about what fits your interests most. Yeah, yeah. so your advice is just follow your, uh, your interests, describe them and why does your interest meet uh, exactly. with our pr yeah with with our program? Okay. Okay, then I'll just move on to the next subject. Uh, on our website, you find as well uh, information on practical matters. Uh, so in the top bar. On the right, you can click on practical matters and then you will see this information on, for instance, uh, visa permits. Maybe you, you need it, that if you not have a non-EU nationality, you will need to apply for that. There is described how the procedure works. Uh, information on insurance, living costs in Amsterdam and also, of course, on housing. Uh, because that can be a difficult uh, thing to find in Amsterdam. Uh, well, first of all, maybe Lucas, you can share your personal experiences on all that matter. All of my struggles. <laughs> um, your struggles. No, for us, uh, mm, a couple of friends or actually fellow students of mine and me found a house on the private market. Mm -hmm. um, however, I would strongly advise you to, to ap apply for university housing. Um, because first of all, it is easier for you, especially if you come from, from uh, far away or don't have that much time uh, before your studies start. Um, and also we, it was kind of a struggle to, to set the whole private uh, housing market up. So mostly they don't allow students, sometimes the fees are just horrendous and sometimes the rent itself is horrendous too. Um, so if there is the opportunity for you to apply for, for student housing, I strongly advise you to do so. Um, and otherwise there's, there's lots of uh, platforms on social media such as Facebook where you can uh, join different groups that offer shared apartments. Um, there it's super hard to, to find a spot because you need to reply almost immediately because there's such a huge request, request especially um, in September when the academic year starts. But I think in the end it will be doable. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so most of your fellow students managed to find something in the end, I, uh, I hope. All of them actually. Okay, yes. well, that's great to hear. <laughs> it yeah. is. Uh, but definitely my advice as well is to start early orienti orienting on the, the housing in Amsterdam because it's, uh, it's not easy to find uh, appropriate housing or long-term housing, uh, which, which you of course need when you come to study here. Um, uh, our university does offer housing to international students, however that's for one year max. So that's also to take something to take into account when you come to study here for a three years yeah. program. Of course, you'll need at a certain point to look for something uh, at your own. Um, 
and as well uh, well you can apply for it and but it can happen still that the, that the number of applicants for housing is higher than the number of available rooms through the university so it's definitely not guaranteed that once you apply for housing through the university that you get it um, because yeah our, our number of students of international students is also growing but uh, for, uh, Housing in Amsterdam is, 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 a, is a struggle, so also for the university to accommodate all students who wish to have university housing. Mm -hmm. Definitely we try to our best to do that. Um, so still, um, when you wish to apply for university housing, I would still recommend you to orient as well on the private market, so to make sure what you need to do, uh, what websites you can use in order to, to, uh, to search housing or maybe visit Amsterdam beforehand already sometime yeah. if you're able to. Um, maybe you try to make some contacts that are useful. Um, on our website, uh, on, on the housing website, you find information on the university housing that we offer, also with a movie clip of what it could look like. And as well, you find a lot of information with tips on how to look for housing uh, on the private market. Uh, I would definitely recommend all of you to register, for instance, for a student owning map. That's an online portal used by uh, housing corporations in the Netherlands that work together to offer student housing through that. So if you register, you will earn points. So the longer you're registered, the more points you earn and the more chances you have to eventually uh, get a, a housing option through that website. So also if you have, uh, you will be offered university housing. It's still useful to register because, well, maybe in a year after yeah. that, you'll need to look for, on the housing market yourself. Um, the university housing, uh, we do have some locations in the city centre, but the majority of locations are a bit further away from the city centre. Uh, but still, they, uh, they are within reach of the campus within 20, 30 minutes, I think, yeah. uh, with good public transport connections. So, and they all have good facilities, and depending on your preference, you can either have shared facilities or non-shared, but also then the, the price uh, goes up. So I hope that is uh, answering uh, your questions on housing for now. Okay. But, but maybe there are some questions still. I do not see them yet this moment on these matters. Oh, do, I do so see one question coming in from Sophia. What are the options, locations, single or in groups, and what is the criteria? Uh, well, once you apply, you will be able to, uh, to you're eligible to get housing, uh, depending on the availability. And when you apply, you also uh, give your preferences. So whether you want a single room or a shared room, uh, whether you want shared facilities or your own facilities, uh, you can find some information on that on the website as well. And well, as I mentioned, the locations vary. So the count on that most locations are not on walking distance of our campus. So you also you always need a bike or public transport to get from your housing location to the campus. All right. Then I'll move on to uh, the next subject. So try to imagine <laughs> in a couple of years, once you have decided to come and study with us, uh, and uh, three years later, you could, this could be one of you, uh, receiving your uh, Bachelor of Science, so your degree certificate. Um, I truly hope so. And uh, well, most of our students, after they have obtained their bachelor's degree, they will continue with a master's program. So they will uh, continue with a master's to specialize specialize themselves in a specific subject. So within communication science, you have the option between the four tracks, with the four topics that we mentioned before, so the persuasive, political, corporate and entertainment communication. And then you can uh, take a one year program to specialize in one of these four topics. Uh, and as well, you could choose to take the, to do the uh, two years research, research program. And uh, that's focused uh, well, mainly on doing research and if you're interested in doing research in your future career, or maybe uh, if you want to pursue a PhD title, uh, that could be an interesting option for you as well. So yes, most of our students will continue um, with a master's uh, program and then enter the markets once they have obtained that master's degree as well. So what could be, uh, well, the 
examples of jobs that they uh, the, that our graduates are doing right now. I've had a list of examples uh, on the slide here. Um, well, most of our uh, of our graduates, um, well, many of our graduates end up working for a media company. So you could think of maybe an online producer for a television company or a journalist editor for a magazine, newspaper, or maybe online media. Another group of our graduates uh, will end up working at a communication department of a, of a non-media organization. Um, so for instance, at a, at a communication department at a, of a big firm like Heineken in Amsterdam, or maybe uh, as a spokesperson for a political party. Also political parties have communication departments. Well, any organization I think that you can think, think of do have uh, such a department where you could work for. And as well, maybe you um, will be, uh, uh, you would like to develop uh, communication products and services for other companies, maybe uh, work for a communication advice bureau or start your own to offer such services, or uh, you could specialize in social media and offer a company's advice on how to uh, uh, work with their social media policy. Uh, or as well, uh, you could continue with doing research, so maybe uh, um, doing market research, or as well within our department as an academic researcher or a, a work as a lecturer, for instance, after you graduated. Um, well, Lucas, do you already know what your future plans are in many years from now? <laughs> um, not really. It's not that specified so far. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but based on, on what I've said before, I, I most definitely want to head into a field that is rather practical and, and mm -hmm. more an applied field of work rather than uh, solely focusing on research. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I also know that I don't want to work for big corporations and do their advertisements um, and do something I ethically, ethic, ethically stand for. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but so far this is still quite broad. Still open. Yes. Yeah, and do, do you already know of activities that you want to undertake to orientate on uh, the field you want to, uh, to um, work in? Yeah, so far I would, I would like to cover broader uh, subjects and not, for example, focus on, on one uh, side of communication, for example, online communication for an institution or organization, mm -hmm. um, but rather be in a broader position where, where the whole public relations of one organization is being covered. For example, doing the uh, communications part or setting up um, yeah, different campaigns, but then also being responsible for setting up events, for example, or yeah, having PR meetings with other um, mm -hmm. clients or partners. Yeah, and so it could be helpful to to, to gain some experience on you know, on that already during your studies. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, well, uh, I can't imagine this is a lot of information to to deal with at the moment. Uh, so hopefully uh, we have been able to answer most of your questions. If you do have questions in the future, please don't hesitate to contact us. On the website you also find our contact details. Uh, and here you find as well the link to our website. Um, maybe there are some still some last questions that I can answer right away. Okay, I'll just uh, wrap it up then. Okay, well that's it for today. There was the webinar. Uh, thank you for joining us. I hope you got the answers you were looking for and you got the information you were looking for. Uh, please uh, be feel free to contact us in the future if you do have any questions or anything you would like to discuss. Um, so hopefully we will meet again soon in Amsterdam. So on that note, I would like to say uh, tot ziens. Tot ziens. <laughs>